that we can be. God wants us to be who he has called us to be according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. So brothers and sisters, we've got to understand that all prayers are not pleasing to God and your prayer has to be pleasing unto the Lord. God is only answering prayers that are consistent to his will. And if you can just pause with me just for a moment and grab your Bible and just go over to the book of 1 John, John, 1 John chapter number 5, uh, because it's some very important information, my God, that God wants us to have. John says, or James says, that uh, ye ask and receive not. Why? Because you ask amiss. You miss the mark with your prayer. Amen. You miss the mark with your prayer when you want to consume it upon your own lust. And when we search further in the scriptures, in the book of 1 John, chapter number 5, verse 14, God says in his word that, 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 uh, and this is the confidence. <laughs> so you can have confidence in God. He said, this is the confidence that we have in him. That if you ask anything according to his will, if you ask anything according to the will of God, he what? He heareth us. If you ask anything According to the will of God, he heareth you. Uh, that means that not only does he hear you, but he answers you. Uh, God wants to answer your prayer. But God wants your prayer to line up with his will. Uh, because that scripture over there says, For I know the thoughts that I had, I think toward you, saith the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not thoughts of evil to give you an expected end. And that's the promise of God, that he will bring you to your expected end. God wants to bless you. God wants to deliver you. It's not his will that any man or woman should perish, but that all should come to the knowledge of the truth. And what's the knowledge of the truth? That Christ in you is the hope of glory. Uh, that the will of God concerning you may be accomplished in your life. Uh, my friend, you've got to understand that as the scriptures have said that God says that we have this confidence in him that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. And then verse 15 says that if we know, it says, and we, and if we know that he heareth us, whatsoever we ask. <laughs> My God, I'm getting excited. We know that God heareth us. So whatever we ask, we know that we have the petition that we desire of him. My God, we have to understand, brothers and sisters, that when you come to God in prayer, coming to God in prayer is a petition. Uh, it's something that you are making known unto God and God looks at your petition as a legal binding promise. Hallelujah. Now let me say that again. That, that God is an awesome ruler. That God is a king of kings. And God governs himself by law and order. So when you come to God in prayer, your prayer is like a petition unto God. And it's legally binding when God says that I'm going to answer that. Because it's according to my will. My God, your God is not a man that he should lie. Nor the son of man that he should repent. Uh, every promise that is connected to the will of God, God is legally bound to answer it. Uh, every promise that you make toward your God and every request that you make toward your God, God is legally bound to answer your prayer. Uh, God will show up in the midnight hour and answer your prayer. Not one jot, not one tittle shall pass away until all be confirmed according to the will of God. So if God says yes, 
it shall be yes. If God says yes, it shall be yes. If God says yes, it shall be yes. And if God be for you, who then can be against you? If God says I'm going to bless you, uh, it doesn't matter about what the enemy says. Thank you, Lord. It doesn't matter what the devil says. The will of God must stand. The will of God must come to pass. Uh, you don't have to wait till the battle is over. You can shout right now. You can trust in God's word. You can trust in God's promise. That's why you can come boldly to the throne of grace and seek after and make your petition known unto God. And if your petition lines up with the petition in the will of God, it shall come to pass. You ought to clap your hands and give God a praise. You ought to clap your hands and give God, give God, give God, give God, give God, and give God, give God a praise. He that shall come, ah, he will come, and he will not tarry. You don't have to worry. If your prayer is lining up with the will of God, whether or not it's going to happen, you can walk by faith. You can walk by faith. You can walk by faith. You can walk by faith and not by sight. Because your God is on your side. Your God is on your side. If God be for us, uh, who then? Who then can be against us? That's why Jesus said, ask, and it shall be given. That's why Jesus said, seek, and ye shall find. That's why Jesus said, knock, and the door shall be open. Uh, if you're asking and seeking and knocking after the will of God, you shall prevail if you be steadfast. You shall prevail if you be unmovable. You shall prevail if you always abound in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know that your labor is not in vain. Uh, your work is not in vain. So when you're asking, you're making your petition known unto the Lord. And you're asking, you're saying, Lord, I got a need. Uh, I got a need. I got a desire. Uh, that I need you to fulfill. But sometimes, beloved, our needs and our desires don't line up with God. So that's why he says you've got to seek him. In the process of seeking God, God is purifying your heart. In the process of seeking God, God is revealing your heart. God is revealing your desires. In the process of seeking him, you find out what the will of God is concerning you. And then as you build yourself up, as God encourages your heart, as you realize that, Lord, I'm changing my prayer because I want to consume it upon my own lust. I'm changing my prayer uh, to your will and to your desires. That's why Jesus said not because you know that you got an adversary. My God, I feel a hoop coming on. You got an adversary, which is the devil, which is trying to kill and steal and to destroy the purpose in your life. But prayer is the answer. Prayer is the key. When you stand in faith, trusting in God, you can persevere through patience. You can persevere through holding on to the promises of God. Trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord. Do good. He shall deliver thee. He shall bless thee. When your prayer line up with God's will, you continue to knock until you get an answer. You continue to seek ah, until God opens the door. In the purpose of knocking, you know that there's somebody behind that door. When you knock on God's door, you know that he's there and you're waiting for him to answer <laughs> your prayer. God will answer your prayer. 
But you've got an adversary. You've got a devil that don't want the purpose and the plan and the will of God to be accomplished in your life. We can look at even Daniel. Daniel prayed. A true man of God. He prayed. And God immediately answered his question. But the devil, uh, he hindered the answer of God. And Daniel went on a fast 21 days fasting and praying before God until he received his answer. My God, when you're seeking the will of God, you've got to fast. You've got to pray. You've got to seek God with all your heart, with all your might, with all your strength. And when God answers your prayer, you'll appreciate it. When God answers your prayer, you'll magnify him. Hallelujah. Just in knowing that my answer is on its way should cause you to want to praise God. Just in knowing that God has heard your petition should cause you to want to praise him, to magnify him, to give him glory. Ask your father. He'll answer you in prayer. Seek your father. He'll answer you in prayer. That's why I said in the beginning, it doesn't matter whether or not your prayer lines up with God. God is not concerned about that. What God is concerned about, you coming to him. That's why Jesus said, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. He said, I will give thee rest. He said, take my yoke upon you. He said, learn of me. Learn what my will is. Learn what my will is concerning you. Learn what my desires are concerning you. He said, my yoke is easy. Hey, and my burden is light. A lot of battles are lost because we don't come to God in prayer. A lot of conditions are hopeless because we don't come to God in prayer. Uh, but he said, if my people uh, are called by my name, if they would humble themselves, if you would just humble yourself, if you would just humble yourself, if you would just submit yourself to God in prayer, oh, God will do a wonderful work in your life. God will turn your situation around. Uh, you realize that weeping may endure for a night, but joy, God will bring you joy. God will bring you peace. Uh, that's why the scripture says, the scripture tells us, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your body uh, as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. Notice he said that's your reasonable service. It's, your, it's what you should do. Uh, when you desire to be strong and to be strong in the Lord, you've got to seek after the Lord. If you desire to be mighty and strong and powerful, you've got to seek after the Lord. If you want peace, if you want joy, uh, you've got to seek after the Lord. He says the joy of the Lord is your strength. He'll give you peace that passes all understanding. Oh my God. And you get that by seeking after him. When you pursue God. When you seek after him. God is able. In a miraculous way. I don't even understand it myself Pastor Duck. When you fall on your knees. And begin to cry out to God. God has a way of exposing your heart. And when he exposes your heart, he has a way to counsel you. He has a way to comfort you. He has a way to give you strength. He gives you what you need in your hour of need. Oh, my God. I see why David said, I, my foot was almost to slip, but I considered God. Uh, when you are about to slip, 
when you are about to do something that's against God's will, you ought to consider God. You ought to consider Ah, he that is able to do exceeding. You ought to consider he that made the waters and made the seas and made the earth and all that dwell therein. You ought to consider he that is able to pick you up. He that is able to put you on straight street. He that is able to turn you around. He that is able to keep you from falling. To present you faultless before his presence with exceeding joy. But you get that heart change when you seek after God. Uh, when you pursue God and, and seek after him. God is able to reveal your heart. And then he's able to reveal his heart concerning you. Uh, it takes time. My God, can I, can I just take another five more minutes? It takes time. Hallelujah, for God to change your will. It takes time for God to show you the way of right. Why? Because we're stubborn sometimes. Why? Because we're stiff-necked sometimes. Why? Because we want to exalt ourselves. My God, as great as God is, he doesn't, he doesn't impose his will upon you, but that's why he said, come, let us reason together. Oh, uh, when you pray, and seek after God. It's a reasoning process. God is able to reason with your mind. And show you the way of right. And show you the strength and the power. And what you can desire. It shall come to pass. If you just seek the will of God. Oh my God. That's why the enemy don't want you to pray. That's why the enemy doesn't want you to seek after him. That's why the enemy doesn't want you to call uh, on the name of Jesus. You see, it's through prayer and through you seeking the Lord, you can understand how powerful that name is. Uh, you can understand how great that name is. My God, you can understand that when you call on that name, uh, heaven has to line up because there's power in the name of Jesus. There's deliverance. In the name of Jesus, my God. Hallelujah, my God. We ought to give God a praise. We ought to give God a praise. My God, and as you, my God, as you are seeking, as you are seeking the will of God, and you make your request known, you see, sometimes in that process, Sometimes in that process, we haven't met God's will. And what I mean by that, sometimes, you know, Jesus said in his model prayer that when you're praying for others, uh, when you're praying for yourself, you got to forgive others. Uh, and sometimes when you pray, you don't get your answer because you haven't forgiven others. You got some hard feelings in your heart. You got some hatred in your heart. So when you seek God, that's revealed. And when God reveals it, you repent. You turn to God and say, Lord, forgive me. Oh, wretched man that I am. Lord, forgive me. Blood wash me and cleanse me and purge me from all unrighteousness. Hey, my God. Hallelujah. That's, that, that's a part of that process. And sometimes through that process we find out that uh when i come to the altar in prayer that i find out that my brother or sister got an alt against me so i've got to leave my gift at the altar that comes through seeking god when you seek god god reveals it to you and then you leave your altar your gift at the altar and you go to your brother or your sister and you be reconciled that's the will of god and then when you come boldly back to the throne of grace, you know that you hear, he heareth you because you have a petition with him. That's the value of seeking God. That's the value of seeking after God. God reveals what's in your heart. Uh, you know, my brothers, can I just be honest with you? My brothers and sisters, 
Sometimes I come to God with some foolish type of stuff. Oh, that come on, shot. You know you come to God yourself with some fool. Y'all come to me with some foolish stuff. So I know you go to God with some foolish stuff. Oh, that come on, shot. And God is able to reveal your heart. God is able to qualify your intentions that when you leave the presence of God, you'll leave better. You'll leave with a clearer understanding. You'll leave stronger. You'll leave with a promise that God has answered your prayer. And then when you pray, when he's talking about knocking, because you have submitted your will and your desire to God. As I said, there are forces out there that are trying to stop you and block you. The scripture says when you do good, evil is always present. Anytime you make up your mind to serve God and do what's right, the devil stands up. The devil manifests himself. He don't care if you're trying to start a car lot or a business or whatever. As long as if it's not your purpose, as long as it's not the will of God. In fact, the devil will help you do whatever he can to keep you off track, to distract you from, his, from the purpose and the will of God. Oh, my friend, but when you turn to God, and say, for God I live, and for God I die. When you say to yourself, no matter what comes, I'm going to stand up and do what's right. The enemy is going to come at you like a flood. But the Bible has promised that the Spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against him. Uh, that no weapon formed against you shall prosper. That's the promise of God. So when you desire to do the will of God and the enemy comes up against you, you cry out on the name of Jesus. Be persistent. Be persuaded. And hell with the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm reminded of Jacob. Jacob was afraid. He's afraid that his brother Esau was going was going to slay him. But he knew that God had a purpose and a plan for him. And Jacob, while he came to God in prayer, he said, Lord, if you perform this for me, then I'll serve you. Ah, and God, ah, as he wrestled with the angel, the Bible says he prevailed. And he told the angel, the angel said, I got to go back to heaven. And he said to the angel, I won't let you go until you bless me. I'm not going to let you go until you bless me. That's how we've got to be with God in prayer. If you're serious about your purpose, if you're serious about the will of God, to being done in your life, you've got to say, Lord, I won't let you go until you bless me. God blessed him. Changed his name from trickster <laughs> to a prince with God because he prevailed with God in prayer. One final note. Hallelujah, my God. I keep giving my final notes. One day it's going to be a final note. Hallelujah. You've got to understand something about prayer. Prayer is for God to help qualify and purify your heart. But also prayer gives God permission to operate in your life. God is sovereign. But if you read in the book of Genesis, God has given you dominion. He said, let us make man and let them have dominion over this earth. God honors and respects your will. 
So therefore, if you want God to help you, you have to ask. Hallelujah. God is not just going to help you if you don't ask. Because he won't violate your will. That's why the Bible says we ought to pray always without ceasing. Huh? Because we need God. Don't we need God? Oh, my God. Friend, if you don't know you need God, you're in a bad place. Uh, but you need God. You need God's help. You need God's deliverance. You need God's strength. You need God's mercy. You need God's favor. You need God's power. You need God's strength. You need God's wisdom. You need God's understanding. You need God's knowledge. You need God. That cabo shut. Hallelujah. And God knows that you need him. That's why he said, if you come and ask me, I will not withhold any good thing from you. God wants to bless you. God wants to strengthen you. You are God's children. You belong to him. Uh, God, God, you are one that made us and not we ourselves. Lord, you give us life. You give us breath. You give us strength. You give us purpose. You give us hope. You give us faith. You give us what we need, not only in this life, but the life that is to come. But the problem is, the issue is, when I ask you, I've got to ask according to your will. We have come full circle. What is God's will concerning you? What is God's desire? concerning you. If you don't know, you come to God and ask. If you do know, you come to God for a flourishing. Uh, either way, coming or going, you got to come to God. Hallelujah. Come on, give God a praise. <laughs> I was dealing with this one secretary one time. And uh, we were writing up bylaws and, and, and situations and conditions. And I didn't realize it until everything was put together that all things had to come through that person. From the start to the finish. And when I realized, I said, look at here. I've been duped. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. God, though, all things come from God. All things go to God. And when you realize that, you're blessed. Not duped. You're blessed. God has established this. That no matter the state you're in, saved or unsaved, Strong or weak. Everything you need, every level of state you're in, God can bless you. That's why he said, come to me. Come. Come. And I love the scripture when it says, come boldly to the throne. And that scripture is talking about the saved individual and the saint. Come boldly. Come with confidence. Why? Because Jesus paid the price. He gave his life as a ransom. But you've got to come with a humble heart. You've got to come seeking after God. You have to come with a broken spirit and a contrite heart. He said, I will in no wise despise. Friend, we all have hard times. You know what? The reason why I came to Jesus was because I was having a hard time. The reason why I called on the name of the Lord was because I was having a hard time. Not only me, but if you just examine yourself, you can agree with me. The reason why you put your trust in Jesus, because you were having a hard time. 
Sekarabosha. Hallelujah. Because I was having a hard time. The will of God is repent ye. Uh, that means not just stand snotting and crying and uh, tearful. True repentance is a change in the heart, change in the will, a turning from the evil to the good, a turning from the evil to the right. And you make up your mind that I'm not going to live that life anymore. I'm not going to go down that path anymore. I'm going to go through the straight gate. I'm going to go through the narrow way. For broad is the way and wide is the gate that lead it to destruction. And many go there that at. But I'm going to go through the straight gate. And that's Jesus. And when you make up in your mind that my life that I was living or that I am living is wrong. But now I'm going to turn to Jesus. I'm going to turn to the Lord. And that's what repentance is. He said, if you repent and be baptized, every one of you in the name of Jesus. Baptism is a representation of being buried with Jesus in his death. And then when you come up out of that water, it's a representation to you being resurrected like Jesus to walk in the newness of life. And if you truly repent, God said that he will give you the precious gift of the Holy Ghost. That's the Spirit of God dwelling with you on the inside with the evidence of speaking in an unknown language or an unknown tongue as the Spirit of God gives the utterance. That's, that's the marks of true salvation. When you turn and repent and seek after God, God receives you. My God, not only does he receive you, he rejoices. Ah, like the prodigal son. The father saw the son afar off. Ah, and told, told his servants, kill the fatted calf, bring the robe and the ring, because my son has returned home. My God, when you return home, hallelujah, God rejoices. And now listen, that whole story of the prodigal son, his turning began with a prayer. Remember? He said, I came to himself. Repentance. He said, my father is rich and my and the hired servants are living better than I'm living right now. Notice. Notice his prayer. I'm going to return home to my father and just be received as one of his servants. Uh, everything begins with a prayer. Everything begins with a turning. Everything begins. Kind of I feel a whole nother sermon coming on. <laughs> everything begins with a change in the heart. That's why it's necessary for us to seek God. So we can change our heart. God can expose our motive. That's why you've got to acknowledge God in all of your ways. So that if your way is not the way of God, he can change you uh, before it becomes a catastrophe. Before you fall into a deep pit or a hole. You follow me? We neglect a whole lot when we don't seek God in prayer. Deacon feels he had the beginnings of my sermon down. He said in his prayer request that things can be done through prayer. Prayer is the answer. And as he said that, I'm like, man, Lord, don't stop him from talking. I want to talk about that. <laughs> because it makes it, 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 it's true. He was given confirmation. If you want help, it begins with prayer. If you want sustainability, it begins with prayer. If you want the victory, <laughs> it begins with prayer. Hallelujah. The very thing that the enemy doesn't want you to do, that's what it begins with. If you want to be baptized today in the name of Jesus, you could come now. 
We've got clothes for you to change into. We got water to put you down in, in the name of Jesus. The Bible tells us that uh, Peter was asked a question about the salvation. He said, repent ye, uh, every one of you, and be baptized in the name of Jesus for the remission of your sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. You've got to seek God. You've got to ask, and you've got to knock. Is there one? Thank you, Lord. All right, we want to ask the church to stand. Thank you, Jesus. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Bless that wonderful name of Oh, there's no Well, there's power in the name of Well, there's power in the name of Oh, there's power in the name of Well, there's no other name I know Oh, bless that wonderful name of Well It's a wonderful name Well, there's gracious Father, in the name of Jesus, we certainly do thank you for this anointing. We thank you for this service on today. We thank you for the word that has gone out. We ask you, Lord, that you break up the fallow ground and allow this word to be received in the hearts of men and women that are in this place. We pray, Lord, that when they leave this place, that this word is not stolen from their heart, uh, that is not found on stony ground, but it's found on good ground in the name of Jesus. We pray, Lord, that you strengthen them in their prayer life. We strengthen them, Lord, in their fasting life. We strengthen them, Lord, in their kingdom walk with you in the name of Jesus. And, Lord, we pray that you continue to bless us and watch over us and protect us from danger seen and unseen in the name of Jesus. Lord, you are our help. You are our strength. You are our refuge. You are our healer and our deliverer. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we pray that you rebuke the devourer. In the name of Jesus. And Lord, as we leave this place and never from your presence, we pray, Lord, that you open new doors and new horizons and new pathways to greater success than we can ever imagine. This we pray in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. Follow peace with all men. Holiness without the which no man shall see the Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Be strong, brothers and sisters. The best is yet to come.